It's basically a thousand acres here and it's split by a big creek and we've got upland pines on one side with just some SMZs. And then we've got right at 500 acres of hardwoods on the riverside. And the hardwoods were probably cut 40 years ago, 50 years ago. And they're at a point now where there's nothing. There's just nothing under there. We've got a great mass crop, incredible regeneration, good species composition. But from mid to late October through the first week of December, there's plenty to eat. But every other month, there's basically nothing. The deer leave the property and go somewhere else. So what we did is we decided to create some cover and some food. If you look right here, you can see eye level as far as you want to see both sides of the road it's just there's nothing i mean it looks pretty i'll give you that it gives you the warm fuzzlies when you come in here and you see all these hard wood but unless you're doing what sid's doing and looking for squirrels it leaves a lot to be desired most times of the year if you're wanting to feed and maximize growth on on deer you gotta have some food in here. So what we did is we took a map. We looked at the area. We tried to go into some areas that the species composition wasn't quite as good or either just when you looked at it, it was just that spot that we needed bed and cover and we needed food. This first spot that I wanna show you, it was basically a sweet gum thicket. It's a little bit more upland. So the water didn't stay on it. So you didn't have all of the oaks coming up but I want you to just watch as we're going through here what we walk into. Brought a logging crew in and we made a 15 acre clear cut right here. Walking from nothing to everything. You give it light, you give them food. Blackberries, dewberries, ragweed, goldenrod, anything, forb, legume, good grasses, anything that they need is right here. We're feeding them and we're covering them. Y'all, we've said it for years, you need three things to manage wildlife, food, cover, water. Look at your limiting factor and that's what you focus on. Our limiting factor here was food, during the antler growing and late stages of gestation and getting those fawns on the ground and started right, we needed food and we also needed cover. We did it all right here, one spot. This place is stacked up right now with does and fawns. As I said earlier, this spot is the highest place on the property. So our species composition was dominated by sweet gums. That's why we selected this spot to take out. But if you look closely, you've got honeysuckle. You've got green briar. You've got muscadine. You've got beautyberry. You've got everything all right in this spot. So we know our species composition of plants that we need are here. Out of the 450 acres of hardwoods, we took out about 50 acres, so roughly 12%. And we're gonna grow timber on the other, but on these openings, we're gonna manage them in an old field style habitat. We'll come in next year with helicopter. We'll over, spray over the top of this with an amazapir type product that's just going to kill the hardwood competition not mess with our beneficial plants that we need. So we're gonna to try to manage this just like Casey or Stretch does in the Midwest or Tom in an old field style habitat. This is what we wanna keep this. We're gonna give up a little bit of timber production, but in the grand scheme of things, when we're balancing wildlife and timber, 
If we're going to manage for wildlife, we've got to have places like this in perpetuity. We've got to have them going forward, just not one or two years. So that's what we're going to do with these clear cuts is manage them for that early successional habitat.